doing? You sniffing? Good morning, guys and gals. There's Wavy patiently waiting. So I just want to quickly tell you what's going on. So I am at Demopolis Lock and Dam. It's just right around that corner right there. I am at a little state dock and about a mile and a half up the road is a Walmart, luckily. And what's coming up here, I'm gonna see if I can pan out for you here, is quite a long stretch of, well, it's, I don't wanna call it nothing because all these rural areas are, you know, usually the prettiest. But um, there's just not, the, the next uh, gas stop, official gas stop, I should say, like a marina, is, okay, let me see, come in here, um, is, is it called Bobby's Fish Camp? It's on the next page here. So I'm at like mile marker 217 right now, and Bobby's Fish Camp is mile marker 118. So that's actually not very far in the whole scheme of things. But it's a bit of a stretch, and, and plus there's lots of little towns, you know, the way I do it and the way I would recommend it, you know, is to have like a scooter or a bicycle or just be good at walking or something because it just opens up to all sorts of possibilities uh, instead of just being reliant and dependent on the, the marinas and the official stops. So um, what I did is I just filled my tank all the way to the top. I'm going back to Walmart right now. I'm going to carry an extra eight gallons of gas. Uh... <laughs> At four or five miles an hour, just under current conditions, that should get me, could get me, um, you know, all the way to Apalachicola probably, or somewhere close, at least the Gulf, at least like uh, Mobile or Pensacola or something like that. But, uh, you know, if I had to is what I'm trying to say. But, um, <clears throat> so, so yeah, this is kind of a different leg of the trip in, you know, it just feels like it. Demopolis. I walked around yesterday. It's right over there. Um, I could have taken more pictures of old buildings for you and some murals and such, but I think you guys have probably seen enough of that. Um, I don't want to start getting repetitive and boring. So, uh, but you know, it, it's a town worth seeing. I mean, if you're going to come by, it, it's you should stop. I pulled into the marina and it was full of logs and debris, and the guy was kind of rude. He was like yelling at me because I was pulling up to a dock because I didn't know where the gas uh, dock was. And and I just said, well, that's fine. I can go spend 50 cents a gallon less and go to Walmart. So that's exactly what I did. Um, so, so yeah, I'm going to try to find some interesting things to show you guys between here and at least Bobby's Fish Camp. Um... It's probably just going to be a lot of scenic. Well, who knows? I shouldn't even say that. There might be some little town that just no one ever pays attention to like that. What was that? Tishawanga or whatever up there in Mississippi. That was a couple miles off the river. And I don't think anyone at that town even knew the river was there at that point. So I thought that was a neat little town. Maybe we'll find something like that. So, okay. Well, I don't like to just turn my videos into a lot of talking. So... Um, I'm going to run up to Walmart one more time. I'm going to get some ice. I've got like a week's worth of food, no problem. Um, and get some more gas here, and then we're going to go through the, through the lock and dam, and I will catch up with you guys soon. Well, the pumps are being used or worked on, so give me a chance to come over here and go grab a couple more things that I don't necessarily need, but might as well grab since it's going to be a few days.
If any of you all are wondering how they put these, put the nuns in, or the cans, I think this would answer the question. It's the Coast Guard, and it looks like they have a, a barge with a crane on it. I keep getting amazed at where this boat can go. Let me show you this, guys. I just came into this little inlet that, like, I bet you there was a foot on either side. Of, <laughs> and it came down to about two and a half feet, but I got in here. And it's it's kind of hard on this part of the tin tom to find protected places because it's, it's in the ditch, you know, ditch mode. Um... But yeah, looks like this is going to work tonight. I think I even see some fish jumping out there. We'll see how this goes. I, think, I don't know what this used to be. Some kind of some kind of barge dock at one time. I've caught three of these white catfish. I looked them up online. That's about the closest I can find. Sorry for the gross view here. but So I just uh, took a fillet off one <clears throat> this morning. And I'm going to see what it tastes like. I'm, they got to be edible. I mean, they're a lot of work for not much meat, but... I, I want to see what they taste like. If they taste anything like that catfish up there in Illinois, I'll report back. Okay, I'm going to let it cool down here. See what it tastes like. I ate the cooked one. It was good. It was edible. Um, I took the second filet off of that one. But they don't really... I could see a big one. You know, several pounds would be worth it. But these, you know, modest little one-pounders or whatever, not really worth it. Um, I mean, if you're really hungry, but, so I got two more last night. One's a decent size, one's a little baby. Um, because they're catfish, they're so tough, they're still alive. I put them in this bucket. I'm just going to dump them. Um, I'm just going to let them live and get bigger. So that catfish didn't die in vain. He's going to good use. Eating some breakfast. He made breakfast. I did something a little different tonight. Put her up on the beach. Mile marker, I think 145 on the tin tom here. Did the dishes. Doubles as my dish rack. Drying out my towels. Wavy sees a titmouse or something. Got a fisherman coming in. There is like a little launch ramp right across, and there is there's a rare creek coming in. This part of the Tin Tom, there's not a lot of places to get off. Um, pretty much Dinopolis to uh, I want to say Jackson. It's you're gonna have to either go real fast or or you're gonna have to beach it and find these little rare creeks and stuff but I mean that should be no problem shanty boaters do it a little differently want to go for a walk want to go for a walk yeah want to go for a walk yeah. you want to go for a walk, 
want to go for a walk? You got to tell me. I'm about to take a bath. Kind of a chilly morning, but you got to do what you got to do. So, another attempt to do a mini rant, a couple minutes or less. But some of these big subjects, you know, it's hard to do them justice quickly, but at the same time, I try to be aware that everybody's busy, including me, believe it or not. And I kind of see every minute I do of this stuff, I'm, you know, someone's giving me a minute of their time. So I try to minimize it. Maybe you've noticed with some of my episodes that I'm starting to get better editing and just really cut down the fat. So, and that's intentional. But at the same time, you can't do it too much or it, it seems to start to feel rushed. So it's just a learning process, but it's a really fun one. But Okay, so the subject matter I've been thinking about here and try to narrow it down is there's always the question of doing stuff by yourself or waiting for somebody to do it with. And it applies to everybody, doesn't it? I probably, as much as I have resisted it and resisted, you know, believing this or I guess uh, accepting this in the past, is I'm I'm a loner. But, you know, I'm not like a, I don't necessarily like it. I will do it. And the older I've gotten, I'm 46, you know, just a reminder in case no one, I haven't mentioned that lately. You know, I'm officially middle-aged, deep into middle age. Uh, I've gotten a lot better at it and, but when I was young, I, I would do anything not to be alone. My twenties, some of my thirties, it really started to change in my thirties and I attribute it to, you know, my childhood, but most people don't like to talk about their childhoods and people, well, let's just say people don't like to listen, hear about other people's childhoods, <laughs> unless you're, you know, a rare type that sees how important it is and how it makes who we are, but I won't go there this time, I promise. Um, but yeah, you know, it, it. my personality, like everybody's got kind of set when I was a kid. And so I do a lot of stuff by myself, but I, you know, I, I don't prefer it. It's more of a default. It's a default setting. So uh, I've had a really hard time finding a partner, you know, a woman that will have an adventurous lifestyle and you know people get really touchy about this but we live in an age where it's getting hard to tell the truth because you know there is a large segment of our population that will freak out when you start to talk you know tell the truth I don't know what the problem is they're zombies anyone watching this channel I'm, I imagine is not one I'd like to think but so yeah for me it's uh if I waited around for someone to, to have these adventures with, like, you know, the scooter trips I take or, you know, obviously this one, I, they would never get done. And part of it is with trying really hard not to sound like a chauvinist or a misogynist or anything is that women just have different standards by and large, you know, the, the gender, the female gender, however you want to say it. They have different standards of comfort and probably different needs too, and I understand that. You know, I have an ongoing joke with a friend of mine, a lady friend of mine that, you know, about a uh, bathroom. You know, you basically have to, a boat, you know, it's like a floating bathroom. <clears throat> it's a bathroom with a, with a boat built around it. So I understand it. And for me, I live completely off the grid. Well, I'll, almost completely. I mean, I have power to my house. But other than that, you know, I have a composting toilet. I have, I jump in lakes and rivers to stay clean, you know. Um, <clears throat> I've gone like an entire year without taking an official shower. You know, just to, and I don't, you know, it, it sounds extreme, but it's like, it's just, I've chosen to simplify my life down to, and having, I guess what you call like voluntary simplicity is one term or, uh, uh, forced, you know, forced discomfort maybe, or chosen discomfort or something. I mean, I don't go out of my way to be uncomfortable in life. I just don't uh want to work my life away 
and it's not that I'm trying to avoid work per se, because a lot of what I do, you know, takes effort, and you could classify it as work. I mean, just building the shanty boat last summer was, you know, kind of like work. It was enjoyable work. It wasn't always enjoyable, but sometimes I had to force myself to do it. But I guess what I've always resisted is this, you know, the traditional thing, the nine to five thing, the showing up uh, hourly wage, paying taxes, consistency of getting a task done for a wage. And so that has made it hard for me anyways to have a lasting partnership with a woman though I've had them and you know I have to put myself into the mix here I mean I'm sure I've got my idiosyncrasies like everybody else in fact I know I do um So, it would take a rare, it would take a female version of me, I guess, is one way to say it. I've heard Wayne, you know, Wayne's Diaries, Real Wayne's World, try to talk about this a little bit too. Um, he has so many videos, maybe he's actually addressed this whole thing, I don't know. I've, I've only seen maybe half of his videos, and I'm a big fan, and I've watched his, a lot of them, but, um, <clears throat> you know, it's this... It's the, it, more common. There's just people are being single, I guess. And I would love to have someone to share these trips with. And, and I, I don't, I have not given up on that. I mean, I've got Wavy there. I mean, she's always ready to have an adventure. But, you know, I'm never going to give up on that. I mean, if I get into my 60s, 70s and beyond, you know, if some other, if some woman comes along and loves what I do and wants to join me um you're never too old i mean i don't think there's like you know the sun never sets on that until you die <clears throat> and then of course you got you know your buddies which i have buddies that i will do stuff with when you're in your middle ages and younger i suppose most people go the way of coupling up and kind of getting locked down and you know and this is only the relationship part of it there's also the money part of it which is possibly a whole other episode maybe i should just do like a part two and you know keep that one since look at this i'm already going on like eight minutes it's ridiculous but so okay in a nutshell i'm a reluctant loner and i i have had people point out or say oh you know how do you do stuff uh, alone how do you not get lonely well the answer to that in a nutshell is I do get lonely. Not nearly as much as I used to. Um, you know, it really is that the, the cliche stuff of you have to learn to live with yourself. You have to learn to love yourself. You have to learn to like your own company. Things like that. Now, I've had a, you know, it's been a long haul for me. I used to hate my own company. And, you know, going back to the childhood thing again you know I didn't get a lot of skills growing up and in fact in some ways they were like counterintuitive to having a happy life and liking myself and things like that so now look at this we got a squirrel that's gonna drive way be crazy <laughs> man it looks like dinner right there I wish I would have brought my pellet gun that's like a that's like a cat what do you think of that? Oh, yeah. Well, she's going to start barking soon, probably. So that's my sign to wrap it up. But, uh, yeah. I don't know. People, you know, it's... I, I, I will throw this in the mix at the end here. Is it... You know, I see it as a, a big part of it. And the older I get, the more so. It's, you know, it's a spiritual thing. I mean, at the end of the day, no matter what someone will tell you, you know, it, it's related to this uh, bumper sticker I saw once. It said, I'm a militant agnostic. I don't know, and you don't either. 
And, you know, that's all, that's all sounds funny and all, and it sounds kind of like, you know, anti-religion or something, which, you know, but if you think about it, you break that down, that little semantics of it, you know, it just means like no one knows why we're here and no one knows what happens when you die. Now, I like to, you know, practice faith, you know, even if it's delusional to a certain extent, I mean, that, you know, it always is if you're that cynical, but I do at least keep one foot in the camp of no one knows why we're here and no one knows what happens when you die. And life is really short. Sometimes it seems like it's taken forever. It's like that line in uh, the, one of my favorite movies, Kingpin, when, <laughs> when he says, Hey, uh, you know, how's it going, Ralph? You know, uh, how, uh, <laughs> how's life going? And he says, taken forever. <laughs> It's like, if you're hating your life, it probably feels like it's taken forever. But if you're enjoying yourself, then it seems like it flies by. Like, you know, for example, this trip has felt like it's flown by. I can't believe I've been out here for two months. It feels like last week that I was just launching there in Illinois. And, you know, I lo I've looked back on some of these episodes to try to teach myself, you know, editing and what I was doing wrong and such. And I just go, what? I can't even, it just seems like... You know, that was yesterday, and in some ways it feels like a lifetime ago. It's just, you know, it's the enigma of time, you know. But, so, you know, okay, if the purpose of life is to make as much money and buy as much stuff as you possibly can, then I don't want anything to do with that. You know, you want to have some stuff, I know. I mean, I do too, like... But when it becomes um, this, you know, when I get to X point in, uh, you know, prosperity, I will then take the time to look around or whatever. Then usually it just never happens. That's what I've kind of seen. Of course, a person has to uh, value looking around. I mean, you know, I... I See, I can be as biased, you know, as anybody else if I let myself and say, you know, just assume that everybody has some similar values that I do. But I try to resist that. Um, I try to be conscious of that. You know, not everybody wants to go floating down a river. Not everybody wants to go, you know, looking around. Not, not everybody values travel. I, I get that. Like, some people are total homebodies. I could be a homebody too. I'm kind of both. I like to have a home base and when I'm home and there's times where I'm just so thankful to kind of just stay on my little plot of land and just kind of do my local stuff and, and have that consistency and, you know, feel like you're grounded. But I get, eventually I get restless, you know, and I get bored and whatever and I want to go look around, you know, I have that restless spirit. And... <clears throat> You know, so folks that don't, you know, it, this would translate into something else. It it not necessarily means you have to leave home and go have a quote-unquote adventure. It could mean a lot of things, you know, just taking the time to learn some of the things that you've, you have not, you know, what am I trying to say here, that you haven't been able to take the time to do, you know, play the piano or something like that. I'm being reminded on this trip that when you have a lot of time... And if it is used, you know, wisely, I mean, I'm not saying like, uh, you know, be a, a tyrant to yourself or something, but like, you know, when you just got time away from your patterns and all the little responsibilities of, of home life, then you can start to learn things. And so, you know, on this trip, I've been teaching myself a few things and, you know, I, I, the next time I do a trip like this, especially a trip like this, where you're just basically floating down a river slowly in a, you know, in a little cabin, I wish I would have brought like a, a guitar or I wish I would have, you know, brought some kind of musical instrument. I can see how it could set the ground work or the base for picking up something that perhaps you never thought you could learn. So um, that's one idea. You know, keep that in mind. You might not be able to see that at the beginning of a trip like this. But like, you know, when you get out here and it's like, okay, now what do I do with this, you know, this slow float down the river? Well... If you have something in front of you that you, I, I've heard somewhere that like to get prof, really proficient at something, it's like 10,000 hours. You know, the average person can get good at just about anything if they put about 10,000 hours into it, you know. So that could mean uh, that could mean a guitar. That could mean, you know, writing. That could mean photography. That could mean 
you know, making videos, something like that. It's probably less, you know, but whatever 10,000 hours comes out to be. And then, <clears throat> okay, well, this monster coming around the bend here might be my sign to wrap this up, because obviously I could just go on and on. So we're going to hit the river again today, head down towards Bobby's Fish Camp. I'll listen back on this later when I'm not jacked up on coffee, and I will see if it's worth saving, and I'll try to figure out a way to put it up on YouTube and, you know, make it worth someone's listen. So, Okay, guys. Well, I sure enjoy your guys' feedback, you know, Someone asked, you know, do I get sick of just talking to my dog and talking to myself out here? Not really, because I, you know, for one thing, you just pick up the phone and call your friends and people call you and, and uh, you know, the YouTube thing, I'm telling you. If you have a trip like this, uh, put up a channel. There are people that are interested, obviously. I know I'll be watching. And there might be a time delay we're gonna get the feedback i mean someone's not right in front of you answering you in real time but you are kind of having a conversation with people so it, you know long story short no i don't i'm not really getting lonely out here and i'm not really getting tired of talking to myself so because i don't really feel like i'm talking to myself so and if i am that's okay too so okay guys i'll catch you later